as all the sheep and everything else that make the material was destroyed. Um, you know, the farm was destroyed. Uh, the, there ain't no more milk trucks coming by because the cows are gone. I mean, all the cattle is gone. Everything is lost. But yet in all of that, she never, she never uttered a word. She never uh, said anything like, well, why don't you just curse Yah and die? But yet it's not until now when we see that Shatan have been given a certain degree of authority to afflict Job himself, making the point that uh, the only reason why he had not messed with Job's wife before was because he was not given permission to touch the man of Yah, to touch the servant of Yah. But here it is that he has been given permission to afflict the servant, and now his wife is telling him to do the most unthinkable thing. The question is, was it her just talking, or was it Shatan who was inspiring her, because he now has a certain level of... Um, of influence over her you see and I've got to say that it's because he now has a certain level of influence over her and so it is him now speaking through her why don't you just curse the most high and die you know it's like Peter when 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 Yahusha was uh, saying that he had to die that he had to go uh, and he had to be hung on a tree and uh, Peter said, no, not so. He was ready to put up a fight. And, he, and, and Yahusha responded, get behind me, Satan. Okay? Get behind me, Satan. Because it wasn't Kiefer that was speaking at that moment, but he was being used. You see? And so, Shatan will use, he'll use, he'll use the closest people to you when Yah allows him. But we have got to continually be on guard. You see, we've got to continually be on guard. And so here he's trying to use the person closest to Job. He said, why don't you just curse Elohim and die? Why don't you curse Elohim and die? And, uh, and so he responded, but he said unto her, thou speakest as one of the foolish women, yeah. women speak. Yeah. What shall we? Now here it is. Yeah. Here it is. And this is a question for us all to ponder. Shall we receive good at the end of Elohim? And shall we not receive evil? Okay. Shall we receive good only and not evil? And this goes back to the sovereignty of Yah that we discussed at the beginning of this study when we started out in Yashayahu, Isaiah chapter 45. He said, shall we receive good only and not evil? You see, many people think that um, uh, if things are going bad, then Yah has no part, nothing to do with it. But what the scriptures tells us, and we can go to our Romans chapter 5, as a matter of fact, um, I'm going to go there quickly, Romans chapter 5. Uh, but and let me just finish reading this verse. Shall we receive good at the hand of Elohim, and shall we not receive evil? But in all this... Job sin. Job did not sin with his lips. In all this, he did not sin with his lips. He never uttered a word uh, that transgressed the law of Yahuwah. Um, and so Romans, I'm going to read Romans chapter 5 here. Uh, okay, Romans chapter 5. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have, we have peace, shalom with Elohim, through our through our master Yahusha Mashiach, okay, by whom also we have access by faith into His grace, wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the esteem of Yahuwah, and not only so, but we glory in tribulations, also knowing that tribulation worketh patience, tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience. And experience hope okay so he says that uh, we esteem we glory in our tribulations also knowing that tribulation work at patience tribulation work at patience and then patience when it's finished its work works experience and experience when it's finished its work work at 
hope, okay? Hope or trust in Yahuwah. You see, it's not until we have gone through some stuff. It's not until we have gone through the fire uh, that we can learn to be patient in the fire. And it's not until we have learned patience in the fire that we experience the deliverance of Yah that uh, causes us to hope even more in Him. And hope make it not ashamed, meaning that Yah will not cause us to hope in Him hopelessly. But when we hope in Him, He will always deliver. You see, not according to our timing, but according to his timing, because he knows just how long we need to be in the fire. And so hope make it not ashamed, because the love of Yahuwah is shed abroad in our hearts by the Ruach HaKadosh, which is given unto us. For when we were yet without strength, in due time, Mashiach died for the unrighteous. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, Yet for adventure, for a good man, some would even dare to die. Okay? And so, suffering comes, number one, it comes to teach us patience, it, and ultimately to give us hope. Okay? And so, we've got to keep that in mind. That uh, we suffer, when we suffer, it's because Yah wants to teach us to trust Him even more. And that is the purpose of that is the main purpose behind our suffering. You see, um, he wanted, whether we're suffering out of disobedience, we, we disobey because we lack trust. We disobey Yah. We go contrary to his law because we don't trust him. You see, if we trust him, then we would do his commands. We would keep his law. We would keep Torah if we trust him. But the fact that we go against it is because we feel as if we know a better way. And what that means is that we lack trust. We simply do not trust him. Um, in verse 11, now uh, going back to uh, Job uh, chapter 2. Now when Job's three friends heard of all this evil that was come upon him, they came every one from his own place, Eliphaz the Temanite, and Bildad the Shuite, and Zophar the Nehamathite, for they had made an appointment together to come to, the, to mourn with him and to comfort him. And by the time they're done, you know, we continue the reading, we'll see that uh, the servant of Yah called them miserable comforters, you know, because truly they came to, they brought condemnation and not comfort, you know. Uh, they came judging according to their own standards and not according to the standards of the scriptures. And that, that takes us, this is an example of where we can judge and judge wrongfully. And the scriptures warns us against that. Not that the scriptures warns us not to judge. The scriptures doesn't teach that we should not judge. But the scriptures does teach that when we judge, we should judge according to righteousness. John 7, 24. And, and um, even Matthew chapter 7 that uh, they use in churches to teach that yeah, in their term, Jesus tells us not to judge. Uh, but that's not what the scriptures teach. Romans chapter 2 and whatever scriptures you want to go to, what it teaches is that, number one, hypocrites should not judge. Number two, that when we judge, that we should judge according to righteousness, according to righteous standards. And so the, the scriptures, the law of Yah, is the standard by which we are to judge. Um, and so Job's friends came they came judging after unrighteousness, after their own standards. 